Hello everypony, I'm Fauna Joy, and there's something I've been wondering as I've begun reviewing episodes lately. Twilight moved into Ponyville's library and seems to act as librarian now that she lives there. So that makes me wonder, where's the original librarian? The library was clearly set up to accommodate some pony before Twilight arrived there. That could be explained away with Spike's line saying Princess Celestia arranged for Twilight to stay in a library, but it all feels too well established to me, like some pony's been living there for a while. It's understandable that the librarian would vacate their home for one night, after all that was the original plan. One can hardly turn down such a request from the princess. But when Twilight decides to stay, she continues to live there and presumably takes over the job of librarian. There's absolutely no sign of the pony to previously act in that capacity. There isn't even any sign in the show of a pony villain who has a cutie mark that seems to suggest being a librarian or having some passion for books. And believe me, I've looked through the entire list. So does that mean there wasn't a librarian? That the library was sitting empty and the bedroom was just there for any pony who needed it? But then who kept track of the books taken from the library? Equestria is a very good place filled with good ponies, but it's been proven to have its flaws. Deciding to just take a book is something that an average citizen would do from time to time and think nothing of it. Considering that the library is very well stocked when Twilight arrives, I'd say that's not what happened. Either that or the ponies of Ponyville are the most honest creatures in the multiverse. Looking at some of the behavior we've seen from them throughout the show, I'm not quite ready to believe that. That leaves two options. One, the librarian left Ponyville when Twilight moved in. Two, the librarian's still around and their cutie mark isn't quite so obvious as to signify their love of books. Option one is likely. After all, a lot of ponies came to Ponyville at that time. Lyra moved there at the same time as Twilight, so who's to say a few more ponies didn't move in and some moved out as well? If that's what happened, then who knows where they went? But some pony who dedicates their life to books wouldn't just walk away from a library they've been lovingly caring for for who knows how many years, so seeming less likely now. That brings me to option two, which was the one that I thought on a lot while I was looking through the list of ponies. The list in particular that I'm speaking of is the one cultivated on Wikipedia by fans of the show through Reddit. For those who don't know, a pony can make the list either by name or description. It's made up mostly of ponies either named by the show, the writers of the show, or other official media, or nicknamed by fans. Though there are many ponies in each section that are unnamed. Looking through the lists, I found two ponies from the show that could potentially serve as Ponyville's librarian, both with the unfurled scroll cutie mark. This mark could signify their passion for the written word and lead them to becoming a librarian. Now, I've read their list of appearances. None of them have done much in the show to suggest what they do in Ponyville, so unless there are accepted fan stories about them that I'm not aware of, then I'm putting them forward as potential librarians for Ponyville. The first is Silver Script. He's a purple pegasus with a silver mane and tail who's appeared a few times in the show, usually as an incidental character. He was seen on a date with the background pony nicknamed Parasol, suggesting a strong connection to Ponyville. He also helped lift the water up to Cloudsdale, was in the tryouts for the Equestria Games during Rainbow Falls, and helped create winter during Tanks for the Memories. Each of his appearances cement that he lives in Ponyville. The second is Written Script. He's a silver unicorn with a purple mane and tail who's... Wait, why was the purple pony given the name Silver Script and not the Silver Pony? The MLP fandom is weird. Written scripts appeared quite a lot in the show, usually among a crowd. It's suggested he's very close to the character Golden Harvest, or Carrot Top if you prefer. He's shown nuzzling with her in a crowd at least twice. That indicates that he has a strong connection to Ponyville, so if he were the librarian, he'd have a very good reason to stay. These two are good potential candidates in the show. They're well established in Ponyville and could easily be imagined working in the library. 
However, there is one last potential candidate I found while going through the list of ponies outside the show. She's an unnamed green earth pony with a red mane and tail who appeared in one panel of the IDW Comics Friends Forever issue number six. She's cited to be a representation of either Deb or Fiona. I'm not sure who those people are. I can only assume they're staff at IDW. However, she's unique because she has a book for a cutie mark, the only one in Ponyville that I could find. That, and she's based off someone who works in a form of written media. I think she'd be perfect for the Ponyville librarian, with the permission of the person she's created after, of course. Whether any of these ponies are the librarian or not, there's still another question that's been brought up by other reviewers. What happens to the library when Twilight's away? Does it just sit closed waiting for her to get back, or does some pony come in and operate it for her? The town is constantly disrupted by the adventures of the main cast. The episode Slice of Life showed that the rest of the town has gotten used to running things around their shenanigans, so it's not much of a leap to imagine some pony took over the duties at the library while they're away. This would give the original librarian a reason to stay in Ponyville regardless of who they are. With Spike's ability to send instant messages, he could easily send one out any time they have to leave town. And if he doesn't have a chance, any pony who notices Twilight's gone can just drop by the librarian's place and mention they're needed. Essentially, they'd become the town's backup once Twilight took over. I find it odd that some pony would step down from a position they held for so long, though I suppose it's not that hard to imagine they'd ignore such a request from the princess or her prize student. And if they had family or romantic connections in Ponyville, it would give them more time with those ponies, so not really a bad deal all in all. But in the end, this is all theory. I was hoping to get an answer to this question by the time the show ended, but that idea clearly went out the window when the library was, you know, destroyed. I guess the new question became, did Twilight's castle library become the town library? We know she's open to ponies coming and going from the castle, especially if they have important business. I'd imagine she'd be perfectly fine loaning books in her library out as long as they brought the book back in good condition. In that same vein, I'd imagine a lot of the books in her castle library were moved to the school's library once it was established. I know she brought a lot of books with her when she moved to Canterlot, still a little salty about that by the way, but that's not the point, but Twilight is the kind of pony who just magically fills a library regardless of the size, so any books she gave to the school were likely almost instantly replaced. This makes me curious as to who became the librarian for the school. Maybe the original librarian took the position, settling happily back into their old familiar job, or maybe it was a new pony. The only pony we see performing typical librarian duties is Cozy Glow, likely as a part of her plan to gather all the information she could about Tarek, the Tree of Harmony, and whatever else she needed to do the spell to rid Equestria of magic. But once again, no such luck on an answer. Maybe if we're super lucky, we might get a glimpse of the librarian in the season 10 comic, but considering the fact that the story arcs are going to be pure world building, I will not complain. Especially since the Zebralands are first. With a lot of excitement for those stories, I'm Fauna Joy flying off. <laughs>